Hi guys, welcome back to Max Electronics. I hope you're doing well this evening. And in today's video, we will be looking at how to convert your original manufacturer's steering wheel control with your uh, custom radio that you've installed. So stick around. So here we have, uh, for example, a Mitsubishi uh, steering wheel with an original manufacturer's Mitsubishi controls and I've installed a Sony radio, Sony head unit. Uh, the controls are incompatible, so the only way that uh, used to, well, what most people would do is to buy this expensive converter that costs uh, over a hundred bucks, and then you can plug your uh, steering control into that converter and the converter into the radio and it'll work. But there is a lot cheaper way that you can do. It's a little, little uh, bit intricate to do, but it's, it's very simple and it's very extremely cheap. And I'm sure if you've got soldering skills, you can do that. So to do that, uh, let's remove this screw behind the steering wheel. Uh, for my Mitsubishi anyway, or for other cars, there may be other way to remove the steering control. So the point is to remove that controller out. So now that we've got it off, let's head to the bench and uh, have a look at it. So here are the controls at the table. But before we get to them and uh, me explaining you how to make them work for very cheap uh, without any specialized expensive controllers, let's have a look at how the steering control works. So this is for the Sony that I have. Uh, they will all have their different resistances. So all you need to do is to Google your um, steering remote control stereo resistance. So as you can see, we've got the jack, just like you see in this video here, that's unplugged from my stereo. That doesn't come with your car. So in your car, you would usually have something like um, a harness, which is a standard harness. You know, it's got multi pins. So it's got heaps of pins there you've got the power there you've got your right left speakers you've got accessory illumination reverse parking whatever there is and there'll be one wire or two sometimes it's one sometimes it's two that will be a remote control again you can find that in your stereos manual so you'll find one uh in my case i have uh two for sony and they usually connect through the little jack so three and a half uh, tip ring sleeve jack uh, the jack would usually come with the stereo that you buy. In my case, uh, you can have a jack uh, that uh, will be your standard, you know, three pin tip ring sleeve stereo jack, just like headphones, and you will have three cables coming out of it. So obviously for tip ring and sleeve, one will have ground, which would be this one. Uh, I'll just write it here. The second one would be steering two which is barely used and the first one which is the tip would be steering one so in my case i'll be using steering one and ground so from this harness you'll see the cables go into your vehicle so again if it's one that means the second one's already grounded so you'd be only working with one so you'd have one coming out here for for whatever say let's that would be the steering and that would be steering ground they're usually marked like that as well. Sometimes, again, that's already common to the car, so you'd have just steering control. What happens is you've got your stereo, and then that's not a good square, but you got your stereo. Um, put this little speaker sign here, and you would have, say, two cables coming out, then they go into the harness, and then they're coming out of the harness, two of them, and they go right into your steering control, like this one, for example. In some cases, you might have two controls, you know, or either on one side, you'd have one on this side, say with play and volume, and the other side would have mute or something like that and mode select. In my case, it's two. So because my Sony doesn't have a Bluetooth control, and I don't like using Bluetooth in a car anyway, I'll be repurposing those buttons. So in my case, what happens is, if you have a normal, just one side, then that'll go straight into the controller, like that, that's it. If you have two of them, you would have the cables coming out. And you may not see it, but you'll have a steering control here connector that connects to your control with buttons. Uh, and then you'll have another steering control, say, on the other side with more buttons. And there'll be a plug there. You'll see quite a few wires. In my case, you can see there's four pins here and five pins here. And I've already scribbled what they are. 
the in normal case like that, again, that goes straight there. You might have extra wires for illumination, but we don't need those. I mean, you need those, but we're not going to touch them. In this case, what happens is the wires will be discreetly coming in, going into here. Then the second wire would be going through your steering wheel into the second controller, and from the second controller, it'll go back to ground. So now that we've got this covered, let's see what... Um, types of steering we can have. This is for my Sony and as you can see we've got the jack. Uh, they are using the middle pin for the shift. So shift gives you twice much the buttons. So if you're holding down shift those buttons become something else but um, that's too many buttons to control. So we're going to ignore the shift. And as you can see that's your two wires coming in right here. So one and two. So we've got the steering ground and remote. Now, this is the resistors in series. And as you can see, the buttons are packed in between them. So if we press this button, which short circuits completely ground to remote, the stereo will be off. If you add a 2.2K resistor to the button and align, it'll be a source select. If you add another resistor, so if we get rid of that button here, and all you have is now 2.2 and 2.2, you got the mute, so that's 4.4 kilo ohms means mute. So if you put 4.4 kilo ohms between um, ground and remote, it'll mute. If you say uh, put 6.6 .6 kilo ohm, it will be list, and so on and so on. So they add up. So in my case, this stereo has uh, the same thing, except they have a resistor here at the end. And at the moment, it doesn't work at all. So none of the controls work. It's because it's already resisted there. And the stereo, when it boots, I have to turn it on and off again because it's already seeing the resistance here. There's some sort of a 38 kilo ohm or something resistance. And the stereo is confused. Why is it receiving, you know, press button signal? So we're going to fix that. The other version you can get is in parallel where you have your line, well, your ground. And then you have your control so remote control and then you have a resistor and a button and another resistor and a button so if we translate this and it's so on I'm not going to keep drawing it so if we translate this this will be 2.2k this one will be 4.4 so as you can see, we're shorting 4.4 across those two lines, and that means source. We're shorting 2.2K, and 6.6 .6 would be mute, and so on. So that's two types. It doesn't matter which one you have. All we have to do is to change the resistors. So let's have a look. I've got a little solder ball rolling around here. So let's have a look at this one first. In my case, I've scribbled out. Uh, it's just a scribble on my draft paper. This is the this controller this way so we've got the first pin loops around to this telephone controller and again you can repurpose the buttons you can make uh, because i don't have a controller i might make uh, you know so i'll use in this case mode i will use um, this button uh, volume up and down i'll be using this one and this one and then uh, up and down, it's seek plus, seek minus. So this remote control is full now, and I've still got quite a few functions. So I've got mute, I've got source. Well, mode and source really is the same. Um, I've got uh, list and select. So what I'm thinking, I will make this button, the top one, as mute. The second one, I'll probably make um, list, because it's more convenient to press. And then the last one I'll make select. And of course, off and source doesn't matter and shift. Unless you have more buttons, you can fill them in. So I will have to calculate all the resistance, but let's have a look inside. There's another example, by the way, of the parallel. That's what I was saying. So as you can see, they just go ignore the rest of this. So as you can see, they're just going literally 1.2 case is one signal, which is um, your source or off. Uh, mute is your 3.5k, display song info is 5.7k, and so on and so on. That's the parallels. I think that's for Pioneer. Yeah, that's for Pioneer head unit. So 
let's open this up. And again, the other wires, as I said, they are illuminations. So we've got um, the loop that connects those two together. Then we've got the common ground. They actually ground it together. It doesn't matter. And then we've got illumination positive negative, illumination positive negative. So that's all there is to it. Let's open it up. So here we go. I've, I have not opened this one yet. I've done it in my older car. So we've got a circuit board that we can get out. And what we find is LEDs. Let me zoom right in for you so you can see. There we go. So as we can see, it's full of LEDs and resistors. So I haven't traced it out yet. Uh, the LEDs do go through resistors by the look of it. But again, that's for illumination. And that's our two remotes that we're interested in. One is ground, which is this one, I believe. And as you can see, it loops through all of them. And then we have resistors. So they are using, I'm still trying to figure out. Let me just quickly reverse engineer it and I will tell you the results. I reverse engineered it and it's almost identical as the Sony diagram that you saw of this one. So we've got uh, stereo coming in and it goes straight through 270 ohm resistor and then it clicks on to mode button. Then it goes for 470 ohm channel plus button, 560, channel minus, 820, volume plus, and so on and so on. When it reaches the end, in here there's a termination resistor at 68 kilo ohms. Now that's a problem for me and for my Sony. So what I'm going to do with R6 is remove it completely. So there is no termination between those two pins. Then it continues on and goes to the second module, which is the phone one, and continues on through uh, 1.5k resistor, then it's got the speech button, 1.8k resistor, off hook, 2.7 off on hook, and then another 68 kilo ohm termination. That's why I was getting reading of 30 something ohm, uh, kilo ohm. So I'm going to remove this, those two resistors. The reason I've done this is just in case in the, in the future, if I want to sell the car, I would want to resolder this back and put the original head unit in and, you know, make it as original as possible. So it's always good to write down the values. And what a, uh, another good idea is when you remove all the resistors from the board, all the ones you're not using, put them in a little tiny bag, seal it and sticky tape it in the back of a steering wheel or in the back of the panel here somewhere. So this way you don't lose it next time when you actually want to resell the car and want to return it to original condition. You can just get that bag out and uh, resolder the way it was. So um, again, luckily for me, I don't have to do too much digging around. With the car that I had before, I had to do a little jumper wires and all sorts of things uh, to get the right re resistors because I think it was wrong. Um, it was, I think the first one was say channel plus, then it was volume minus, then it was mode. So of course you'd have to tap in and then cut the wire and tap there and do a bit of jumpers. But this, in this case, it's actually quite good because original Mitsubishi has mode, channel plus, channel minus, volume plus, volume minus. And in the Sony, as you can see, we've got source, which is mode, same thing, seek plus, seek minus, volume plus, volume minus, ignore this. So I can actually go and put the first resistor at 2.2 Ks and the next resistor, uh, so R1 in my case, will be replaced with 2.2 um, K resistor. R2, because it now it goes from mode to um, volume, out to the channel, would be replaced with, so I have to combine those three, and the next resistor R2 would be 6.6K. And then R3 would be 3.3K, R4 would be 4.7K, R5 would be 6.8K. And that's it. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna um, take that cable, I'm gonna disconnect it, that's the one that loops around to the second board. Disconnect it from the first board and join it right here. So disconnect it from here. Sorry about this, I didn't have any white out. I'm gonna disconnect it from the end of that board and connect it right at the beginning of the board here. And then I'm gonna add, or maybe even, no, yeah, at the beginning of the board here. So that would be a secondary board then. And then I'm gonna add the R1, in my case, because I want it to be um, mute. It'll be 4.4K, 
R2 would be 2.2k and uh, the R3 would be somewhere in like 30k range or something like that just to get that select mode. So I'm going to start desoldering the resistors and it's always a good idea when you resolder everything just measure it with the multimeter press the buttons and see if you get the correct resistance so again for for example for list you'd have to have 6.6k for seek 8.8k output between the lines um, and so on and so on so again uh, in my case i don't want this termination resistor at the end so i'm going to remove this and put them aside and then replace all the resistors and i'll come back and we'll measure it together and see what resistance we're getting and if it matches this sony schematic so i have removed that r6 that was looping ground to the signal through the 68k uh, resistor now those are led resistors i haven't touched them I've removed this small resistor which was 270 ohms and instead I've just tagged it because I didn't have that small size, I had uh, 1206 ones. Uh, it's the same lines and I've tagged the 2.2k um, across here. Uh, that's for this mode button. Then I've put, I've actually used just a few values. Then this one is 68, um, uh, 6.8k. And I think, no, that's it. that's it. So the next one I've installed R4 is um, 4.7K. And then here I've used two 68Ks to achieve the value of, uh, I think it was 3.3. Uh, uh, because the resistors have, you know, play with them, they're not exactly 68K. Uh, this one was lower, so two of them actually turned out to be 3.3K exactly. So that worked out perf perfectly. You can see they doubled up in parallel. And then 6.8K here. And that's it. So uh, another good idea. I'll show you the second circuit before I tell you. And the second one, I've also discovered that those functions, this select and um, list, they don't, uh, they're not supported by my stereo. So I have two blank buttons because um, I've already filled the rest of them. So mute works. Uh, which is the speech. So speech is mute and those ones meant to be least and select but stereo doesn't support them so they're just blank. So I've used, um, uh, what value is it here? 2.7, our oh, 2.7k resistor with a 1.5 that gave me value of 4.4 roughly. Uh, again there is a play so if you don't have exactly say 4.4k resistor you can do plus minus 200 ohms or so 300 ohms. It'll be just fine. Uh, and those ones again I've added them but uh, my stereo doesn't support it so those doesn't matter and uh, uh, yeah so that's that worked out well another good reason to test it so when you assemble it put it together put it back in the enclosure but don't put it all back in the car just plug it in and test that all the functions will work I've already tested it just before but I will show you in a second that it works. The reason for that is that, for example, when you're testing, I've only encountered that once, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So, if, for example, yeah, that's the two functions that are not supported. So, if, for example, you're testing it and you press source and it works fine, and you press, uh, which is what I'm using, uh, and you press mute, it works fine. You press seek plus, it works fine. You press seek minus, it works fine. You press volume plus, and it triggers SIG minus. So for that reason, you need to increase the resistance because the resistance, again, as you're adding up, if this one, say, was 2K instead of 2.2 and 2 and 2 and 2, you already got 8K, not 0.8. So you're already missing out on 800 ohms. So measure the circuit as you go. Or for example, if you go to here and you press volume plus, but it actually triggers volume minus instead of volume plus, that means you need to decrease the value a little bit. So unless you get a really good resistors, just uh, play with the values and get them, you know, plus minus. It's absolutely fine as long as as you measuring, say, from here to um, here, and you get roughly 8.8, 8.5, maybe nine kilo ohms. That's fine, and then continue on adding it together. So that's it, and that's the values that I've done for the first board and for the second board. But again, that's in my case. So in your case, it could be different values. That's the Sony values. You can find them online openly. Uh, now I'm going to reassemble this and put an enclosure and we'll go to the car and test it. I have reinstalled uh, the uh, both the top control and the telephone control. 
um, like I said before only one button works because the other is not supported so the head unit is on and uh, let's try muting it so if I press mute you can see the red light appeared so that works let's try other ones the volume and volume down next and back and then mode and of course the mode works um, I don't want to play USB just so the YouTube doesn't hit the copyright excuse the actual audio because I'm not actually wearing the mic so like I said this all works and now I'm gonna install the amp <laughs> in my new car but yeah so that's how you install the um, uh, original controls with your own stereo of your choice so thanks for watching i hope that video helped you and helped you sort out your stereo steering control my name is max don't forget to like and subscribe i will see you next time bye